Hillary Clinton, the queen of warmongers, she has a podcast. And her latest guest was Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> yes, I already know what you're thinking. Oh, God, can it get any worse? I don't know, man. Maybe next time we get Kissinger on. Who knows? Here's what... <laughs> Again, I went digging to find this. Okay, I'm going to play you what they're saying. Let's, let's take a listen to what they said. And I have the script, by the way, so hopefully we can follow along with them. Not just him, but his enablers, his accomplices, his cult members have the same disregard for democracy. Do you think we need a 9-11 a type commission to investigate and report everything that they can pull together and explain what happened? I do. Uh, let me, again, uh, to your point of who is he beholden to, I, as I've said over and over, as I said to him in that picture with my blue suit, right. as I was leaving, what I was saying to him as I was pointing rudely at him, with you, Mr. President, all roads lead to Putin. I don't know what Putin has on him politically, financially, or personally, but what happened last week was a gift to Putin because Putin right. wants to undermine democracy in our country and throughout the world. And these people, unbeknownst to them maybe, are Putin puppets. They were doing Putin's business when they did that at the incitement of an insurrection by the president of the United States. So, yes, we should have a 9-11 commission, and there is strong support in the Congress to do that. We can't do that until we can pass a bill. And since the Senate's not in, we'll have to do that as soon as the Senate is in. But there is support for that. In the meantime, though, I've announced that General Honoré would be giving us guidance as to control and command. Clearly, there needs to be a restructuring of the infrastructure of security in the Capitol. For listeners who may not know, General Honoré is the retired general who literally came to the rescue of the All right, all right. I, <laughs> I know I'm making you suffer. I, I know you don't want to listen to them. <laughs> but it, it's important. It's important. It's important to show you how ridiculous this is. And I, I think we, we missed it just earlier, uh, but you can see a part where uh, Hillary, look what she says here. She's talking about Trump. She's saying, I don't think we yet know. I hope historically we will find out who he's beholden to, who pulls his strings. I would love to see his phone records to see whether he was talking to Putin the day that the insurgents invaded our capital. <laughs> really? Really? And of course, the media ran with it, right? The media started reporting this as fact almost. And, and then, of course, people swallow it because. The Daily Mail. Yeah. OK, not, not much hope there anyway. But see, Hillary Clinton says Putin may have known about the Capitol riot. No, that's not what she said. She, I mean, she said a lot of ridiculous things, but that's not what she said. But of course, people. People assume it's true, right? Here, you can see Hillary Clinton suggests Donald Trump incited Capitol right on Putin's behalf. Yes, she's, she's suggesting that indeed. Uh, is it true? Do we know that? Was she in the room? Who the fuck knows? Also, I, I just want to point another thing out. I mean, obviously this whole, thi this whole assertion is, is completely absurd. But even if you were to play devil's advocate, okay, just hypothetically speaking, imagine tomorrow morning we got a hold of his phone records that day. And it turns out he really was speaking to Putin at that exact moment. What, what is bizarre about that? Pre you, you do know that presidents speak to each other all the time, yes? Like, th that is a common thing. I'm just saying. So I, I don't even know what that means. Uh, it's just fucking astounding. They're still pushing this Russiagate nonsense. And it, it's... Like, the xenophobia, the fact that people are comfortable with this is, is unbelievable, right? It's unbelievable. Have people not progressed or evolved from the era of McCarthyism? Have you learned nothing? Do they teach you about that in school? I learned about that in school. I didn't go to an American school. Uh, well, I mean, my high school education was in a French school. So they taught us about McCarthyism. I don't know if they taught you guys. Does it ha happen in your country? 
It's unbelievable. This is 2021 and they're still pushing this bullshit. Biden has been inaugurated and they're still pushing this bullshit. Or to be fair, though, this is a day ago or a few days ago, right? They're not going to let it go. You know that, right? They're not going to let it go. During the next couple of years, anyone, anyone who criticizes Joe Biden or his administration is going to be labeled a Russian agent, a Putin puppet. They're, they're literally using that language. It's not just some like, you know, some term you hear thrown around. No, Nancy Pelosi, you just heard her say Putin puppet. Like they, they full on believe this shit. I mean, I actually don't think they believe this shit. But they're, they're, they know damn well that this is all just nonsense. But it's astonishing. And you can be damn sure they're going to continue pushing Russiagate. They're going to continue selling this narrative that, oh, look, Putin, he's uh, behind everything. And, you know, he's so smart that he's able to subvert American democracy, which, you know, we keep hearing, especially Arabs, that America is the beacon of democracy and freedom in the world. So, I mean, doesn't really inspire much confidence. Um, but nonetheless, Putin is behind everything. Right. Well, make up your minds. What, was it white supremacists or was it Putin? You have to pick one <laughs> because the, the, I, I'm having a hard time understanding here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're going to keep pushing both, right? Because that way you can pass domestic terror laws and quell any sort of criticism, working class uh, movement, you know, any kind of sit-ins, protests. You had people saying, for example, if you go into a federal building without authorization, you should be put on a no-fly list. What, so does that mean if you as a leftist, right, a lefty, you want to do a sit-in, which is a peaceful, nonviolent protest, you can't do that anymore? You're going to get put on a no-fly list? Like, think of the ramifications this has for you as a lefty. Fuck the white supremacists, right? Just think, think of what this means in broad terms in regards to holding politicians accountable and direct action. So, no, not allowed. You should, you should be worried. Because we've seen this movie before. It's not like, oh, we're fear-mongering about what might happen. No, no, this, this authoritarian, this um, expansion, well, rather creation, and then, of course, the expansion under Obama of the surveillance state is real. It happened. We've seen what they do, uh, not just in the U.S., but even abroad, right? Kidnapping foreign nationals, torturing them, rendition. They will go fucking crazy. Do you understand this? And no one will hold them accountable ever. So, yes, there's an issue here. And of course, the Russian thing like, oh, well, you know, you're, you're, you're just you're just a Putin puppet. You're a foreign agent. So you can't say anything about imperialism. You can't say anything about foreign policy. Oh, you're a Putin puppet. And what is astonishing, I just want to remind you the irony here. You know, Donald Trump has been acting like a spoiled brat, right? And, and saying, like, oh, well, they stole this election from me. And he's been disputing the election results, right? And they're saying that he's been trying to undermine their democracy with that. Well, I mean, America doesn't have a democracy. But anyway, let, let's go with their line of thinking for now. What does that say then about Hillary Clinton and all of the media that have been pushing Russiagate for the last years? Have you also not been disputing election results? Also based on just... I mean, I would argue the Russiagate shit is even fucking wilder. You saw what happened. They had a whole Mueller report and, a, you know, they appointed a special prosecutor. And, I mean, Christ, like, they, they made money off of that shit. Real money. You saw Rachel Maddow. You saw all these shows, these books bringing out some some... Uh, author was posting a picture of all the books uh, written about Trump. You had a stack this big. And, and of course, you know, baseless, complete bullshit. And in the process, they smeared WikiLeaks as well. They used it to smear WikiLeaks. So, I mean, the irony is staggering. The irony is staggering. And now they're calling for a, a commission similar to the 9-11 commission. If I recall correctly, if I recall correctly, the 9-11 commission, when they published their report, again, I was, I was quite young when this happened, but I, I vaguely remember it cleared the Saudis of blame. 
So just from that alone, I, I know that that's full of shit. <laughs> you, you, it stinks. Something stinks. So, I, I mean, I don't know what they mean exactly because, you know, given, given the results of that uh, endeavor, it was not a very exhaustive investigation, was it? Nonetheless, the, the main takeaway here is once again, what did I tell you about? The rhetoric. Do you see how Chuck Schumer compared the Capitol rights to Pearl Harbor? They're comparing it now to 9-11. They're saying this is of such devastating proportions. This is such an affront on our democracy that it is of the same caliber as 9-11 and Pearl Harbor. That's what they're trying to tell you. I mean, you can, you can be appalled by what happened without making absurd exaggerations, right? Truly. Surely. Surely no one thinks that was of the same nature or caliber as 9-11 or Pearl Harbor. Are you serious? That's, that's obscene. What I do see, however, I see the same media circus playing out, the same kind of propaganda. Oh my God, look. Our nation's capital is under attack. They're striking at the heart of our democracy. Our republic is imperiled. We're under, we're under extreme duress. We're facing grave dangers. Look, we need a commission. We, quickly, we have to pass a domestic terror law. And if you say anything, you're a white supremacist. If you say anything, you support Donald Trump. What? Again, I have more reason to hate Trump than you, to be honest. But I, again, I can say that about every American president. <laughs> yeah, no, they don't care. No, 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 no. You, you either accept what we're doing or, or you're with them. Right? Same language as George Bush. You're either with us or against us. That's it. Shh. So, of course, they bring out Nancy Pelosi, who's just been reelected as House Speaker. They bring out Hillary Clinton, who astonishingly is, is nonetheless still one of the most prominent senior figures in the Democratic Party to help push this. One second, they say, look, there were uh, kill capture teams and these are white supremacists and Trump incited them. Trump refused to acknowledge the election results. He said that uh, votes were siphoned away. He said that, uh, you know, he, he, sorry, he filed uh, several lawsuits, remember, and to dispute and recount. And they say that this is all of Trump's fault and therefore he should be impeached, right? They impeached him over it. Then they turn around and say, no, it's not Trump, it's, it's Putin. What? Which one is it? Doesn't matter. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to make sense <laughs> because these people are not fucking interested in reporting or making sense. It's just they repeat what people like Pelosi and Hillary Clinton say, and they they frame it as fact. And, you know, damn well, most people will not even read the article. They will they will see the headline and scroll past. They won't even read the article. Never mind. Go and actually read the transcript. Listen to the audio as I just played to you and and point out the <laughs> glaring contradiction here that they can't even, they don't even know who to blame exactly. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, right? Kind of like the anthrax letters. It's kind of like the war on terror. Like, was it Saddam? Was it Al-Qaeda? Was it the Taliban? Doesn't matter. We'll fuck all of them. We'll go after all of them and we'll use this to justify anything we want to do. <laughs> it doesn't have to be true. It doesn't matter. That's not the point. The point is, if most people believe it, we can do what we like. We can pass whatever laws we want. That's the point. And remember, this is not new. Huh? You had this stuff like from the Washington Post in 2019 uh, saying that Trump has spoken privately with Putin at least 16 times. Here's what we know about the conversations. Okay. You, you do know that heads of state speak to each other, right? You do know that th that's a thing. Doesn't matter. Fucking hysteria, man. It's hysteria, truly. 
I wonder, I, I honestly wonder sometimes what Russians think of all of this. Like, do they even hear about this? Because it's so dumb. It's so ridiculous and, and baseless. I wonder if they even hear about this and, and if they do, if they just laugh at it. I'm pretty sure they do. Truly farcical. And for the United States of all countries, the United States is the last country on the face of this planet to talk about interfering in other countries' affairs. The last one. Compile a list, you put the U.S. at the bottom with the United Kingdom. The last country, <laughs> okay? Well, maybe, maybe once you actually stop voter suppression, you stop treating uh, Hispanics, uh, Blacks, and uh, the working class uh, like dirt, and you actually let them participate in your democracy, maybe when you close down all of your military bases and stop terrorizing and invading other countries, maybe when you stop enacting coups in other nations, then you can talk about your concerns that maybe another country interfered in your democracy and show some evidence too, not just lie about it. Maybe then Hillary Clinton was jumping for joy when uh, Gaddafi was killed in Libya, right? What did you say? We came, we saw, he died. I can't remember how she, how she, uh, butchered the quote, but it's something like that. Oh, it's so, I mean, that is the land of unconfirmed. Right? Yes, we came, that. we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> did it have anything to do with your visit? No, oh, I'm sure it did. <laughs> so she's totally okay with interfering in Libya's politics. She's totally okay with interfering in Syria's politics, but can't do it, can't do it to the U.S. Uh -huh. No, not allowed.